Hey, what's up? Looks like we're alive. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, Nancy, Asia, Sujanit. I uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, this is the most prepared I've ever been for a live stream. I have my paper down. I have my reference photo. You'll see in just a few seconds, okay? Uh, but first, I want to welcome you uh, to here. So anyone who's here, let me know where you're from, what time it is, what you're doing. Uh, Nancy says, Liron is super red. Thank you so, so much. Sujanit says, hi, Liron. Hey, my friend. I uh, really hope you're doing well. Got my, uh, of course, the mandatory coffee tiramisu taste. Even though I drink real coffee in the morning, not this. This is just for live streams. This is exclusive for the live stream because it's super unhealthy. <laughs> but I need the energy. Uh, but yeah, in any case, so let me open up the stream on my phone just so that I can uh, see it on my end and better see your comments. Uh, and then we'll get to it. Let me show you my desk as we uh, get started. I have a few cool stuff to share with you. Your channel. Open up the live stream. Mute my phone. And here we go. Uh, so yeah, that way I can see everything better. I'm going to place this right here. Um, I do also see John. I <laughs> hope you are well, my friend. Thank you so much. Anupama uh, Shah says hello from India. Can't wait to see what you're gonna uh, paint today. So Janit says hi from uh, UAE. Actually, a, a fun um, thing. So I've been working on contacting a few uh, publishing houses from the um, UAE. So that's gonna be interesting. Maybe I'll get some one few of my books translated uh, into Arabic. Just that's your. I've I haven't talked about this before, but it's gonna be super fun. Um, to see where that goes. Hey, um, uh, El Regev. So I know I know your name. I'm not going to say it. Maybe you don't want me to share it. But uh, thank you so much for being here. Say Shalom in Hebrew. Patty S. Haley Ron, upstate New York here. 12 and snowing. 12 degrees. Crazy. Uh, here it's been a few very cold days, actually. Very cold days. It was... Uh, and that's considered really cold for us. So it was about... The coldest it got was about, I think, 7 degrees Celsius, which is pretty cold. Um, but yeah, it's, it's usually it's warm, so you know it's all relative. Vespa for Janet, good morning, you're on. Hi from Grand Bay, California, 6 a.m., super early. Thank you for being here. Uh, Jade Gao says hi, Liron. Christine Bourgeois says hello, all. So, thank you so so much. We're gonna revisit the chat in just a second. I just want to show you real quick uh, something I've been working on later when a few more people pop in, we'll show it again. But basically, so I'm, I'm back to working on the manga. This is page six, if I'm not mistaken. I'm gonna put a lot of uh, focus on that in the upcoming months. I actually feel really good about it. Not easy, but yeah, I just wanted to show you real fast. So I created this kind of um, what you'd call a name, like a little small version of the story with very simplified drawings, you know, really very simple, just so that I know where I'm gonna place some stuff, what the characters are gonna say, so you can see some of the dialogue. And this is the kind of process I go through to improve it once I move on to the final state. Now, so you see it's kind of similar, but I really changed the layout here because I felt like I need to show more of the environment, which is a blacksmith workshop. Uh, so at first I, I didn't have anything here, and then I said, oh, I'll show the anvil, and then it moved on to this. So just a cool thing to show you of kind of how a work develops. The, the facial expressions took a long time, I had to really look at them again and again and fix and move the mouth and move the eyes and, and maybe I'll still need to move that eye to the left. Now, there's a lot going on here, but it's just really fun and you will see more updates of this in the upcoming days. I know not everyone cares about comics and manga, but uh, this is really a cool project that I am actually looking forward to publishing somehow. Still not sure how, but that goes for that. I will share more of it later on um, for new people who join. Right now we are at almost 46 people that's amazing so yeah maybe if we get to 100 i'll show you more and talk more about the story or whatnot uh but in case yeah uh Sujani, oh yes we got that we read patty we read jade christine i uh, hope you're doing well Sujanit, do you like porcelain palettes uh, so i don't have any porcelain palettes honestly i don't know what they really handle like um, i guess for a studio palette it could be good because it's probably not meant for plein air I did hear a lot of good things about it. It's really a staple, so I suppose it is good. Now let me just try and figure out how you can both see me and have less shakiness. We'll keep it like that. Um, Sima says hi from India. Brock says hey, how is it going? Juan Carlos says saludos, uh, mi maestro. Thank you so much. Sujanith, I'm Indian in UAE. 
uh, uh, okay. Yeah, um, so actually, Sujanith, I'm, I'm also looking at some, um, well, Hindi publishing houses as well. I'm, I'm putting a bit more work into getting my books out there. So these are two languages I'm currently focused on. I know there are a lot of languages in India, but uh, I went for Hindi first. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Alana says, hi, Liron from Montreal, Canada. Very cold today, minus 15, man. Uh, Olivier uh, says, hello from Belgium. Meow, meow. Whoa, that's so cool. Thank you so much. Just chilling. Just got up from a nap. Wow, your username is like perfect. Made just for you, right? Uh, Chuck, my friend. Hey, how are you? Betty Ryan. Hi, Liron from Augusta, Georgia, USA. Okay, let's get to it. So I want us to um, get to painting. Let's do this. We can take a break later. Um, let me open up my reference photo just in a larger size so that I can uh, work from it. So I'm going to go to my YouTube folder, to uh, this live streams folder, and I'm going to open it up on my end. Um, I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on myself to make something good today. We're just going to see where it goes, okay? And I also said I want to put more emphasis on working slowly. And whatever we are able or we manage to paint today, that's just what it's going to be. So if we don't complete uh, the painting, I'm okay with that. Um, and sorry, sorry about that, because I know, of course, people prefer to see a finished process, right? Uh, but I cannot guarantee it, because I do want to really focus on enjoying the process. But, you know, usually most of the time we manage to get quite a lot of work done. So I'm going to take some measurements. This is about where the darkness of the trees from behind kind of settles. And then we can draw this faux horizon line because it's really not the horizon line. It's just where the hill kind of meets the shadows at the back. This is actually a photo I took. Beautiful forest scene. Um, we were there for a birthday and then I took a bunch of pictures. And this is one of the ones I liked. It's actually originally horizontal, but I made it um, uh, vertical because it looks much better uh, and I actually like the vertical format for videos it works better I find so this tree starts somewhere around here and there will be a link in the description box if you want to see the reference photo uh, hey Thomas how are you doing so Janit says your manga drawings are great thank you working on it it's really hard comic drawing is very inspiring like we had Amar uh, Chitra Kata in India. Okay, I'm unfamiliar with them. I'm actually really unfamiliar with the comic industry, more with the manga, but I'll definitely take a look. Um, I'll search him later. Him or her? Not sure. Um, but let me know. I, I definitely want to learn more um, and from different people, right? I want to make sure I have uh, multiple influences and because I feel like I've been practicing on my own quite a bit and I can uh, kind of let some information in now, with, in particular with comics and manga. Um, so yeah, I hope you had a good week. I love Thursdays because it's the end of the week and there's a live stream. So it's like um, finishing the week off with a, with a bang, really. So it's really nice and I can take it easy. Um, so yeah. And usually I treat Thursdays like, and, and some of you have seen my Instagram post on like, don't judge yourself if you did your best. Usually I treat uh, Thursday um, very easily like a win, no matter really what I finished, because I have the live stream. So that's a really meaningful thing for me. It's one of the only uh, schedule events that I actually schedule. You know, most of the things I just do, you know, editing videos, doing stuff like that. But this is scheduled, so just a good time. And thank you so much for being here. That's a great opportunity to thank you once again. Um, so we have a road here, we have the trees. I'm just starting with what looks the most interesting, right? Now, if we look at the main shapes, and again, this is something that a lot of people have some trouble with, foliage. What I really am gonna do is treat this entire thing here to the left, kind of like one big shape, all the way down to here. We have another tree behind this tree, and that's literally just one shape, right? All of this is one shape. Um, there is this tree in the back here that I actually really like. I like that it goes in a different angle than these two. So just another kind of compositional means. Um, I feel like I'll have I, I'll have to do some plan air soon because I'm, I'm getting too comfortable with uh, pictures and uh, using image references. And that's not good. That's not a good thing. And I hope to uh, do some more plan air because it really is a improve. A, leads to great improvement in skills from my experience. So just getting in a few branches here for the main trees. 
Um, I'm gonna add a few more on this side, even though they're not really there, and put more emphasis on that. Just because I don't want to lead all the viewers outside of the frame. So yeah, uh, let me see what else is going on in the chat. Um, Sue says hi from Wisconsin. Cool. Thomas says hello from Germany again. Alice Fed. Alice from Boston. Uh, Mark Fisher, good morning. For artists who like more wet and wet, is it mandatory to stretch paper before? I don't think so, but uh, it really will depend on what you enjoy and how you enjoy painting. So if you enjoy, or if you don't mind rather, the paper buckling a lot and you kind of work around that, I find that it's perfectly okay. Uh, the one caveat I will say is if you're painting very large pieces, you may run into trouble. Uh, and I would love for you to have the freedom to at least tilt the paper to get the, the water to move down as opposed to staying and pooling within those um, curved uh, areas of the paper. That's the one I would say major risk you're running uh, if you're not stretching your paper. And as you know, I, I rarely paint these sizes. Uh, I may do that in the future to challenge myself and to create something grander. I actually do have that desire sometimes. Um, but I do think you can create something grand in a small size that will still look beautiful, right? Of course it will look beautiful, but it will also feel impactful, you know? Uh, it's more of a matter of how you paint, right? Uh, now there is a pretty significant shadow here, so let me put that in. Not sure what causes it. And then we have this beautiful kind of composition of rocks here. We'll figure out the details as we, um, as we move, right? Uh, but I just want to get a few of these down here. With these scenes, I feel much more comfortable um, drawing them real time and actually showing you. But with portraits and things that require careful measurement, and it's just a nightmare. So I'll very rarely draw. There's actually one portrait of me that you can see me drawing live. Not live, but uh, in a video, if you're interested in that kind of a thing. And it's the Barg study that I did. It's so not really a portrait, more of a statue, but still. I think it was a, a worthwhile process. I really like how this one's coming along. It's clear shapes. It's, it looks really good. Um, and I think I may work in slower glazes this time because I do want to get a result that I'm uh, proud of and a little more deliberate with, I think. So we have this cross, shadow crossing through here, another one crossing through there. Um, it's not that complex of a scene in terms of light and shadow, so I'm not gonna map them out, I'm not gonna shade them, like I sometimes, you know, do this. No need to this time. I feel like we're ready to paint and we'll kind of see what comes out of it. Uh, so let me just read a few more chat messages and we'll get going. Juhi says hello from India. Um, Dragons on stilts, good morning, that's a great username, I remember you. Asim Sanyal says highly wrong. Tom Dancer, highly wrong. Hey, hey all. thank you so much for being here, Tom. Always appreciate you showing up here. Um, Andrew Frost, hello from the UK. And Asim says hi from India. So we'll get going. Um, everyone criticizes my <laughs> dirty palette recently. Um, so how do we want to tackle this? Um, I'd actually like to maybe let's try something a little different this time just to keep it interesting for ourselves so here's what i'm gonna do uh, i don't think i ever really did this kind of a thing before let's do a thin glaze that covers everything that's the trees and foliage but not the sky um or you know what should we just cover the sky and that's it i wonder how much of the blue will show let's do this let's make something warm and we'll, we'll figure it out um, I want to do a wash that's kind of mellow and we'll, we'll kind of take it slowly from there. Um, so if I mix something warm but still quite neutral, and can you see this? Yeah, good. So I'm using my uh, quinacridone rose, French ultramarine, and Indian yellow. So these are the only paints I'm going to use. Uh, there's always this question at the start of the process, like how will I paint this? What approach will I take? Um, and you don't always know what's going to happen until you try. So as you've seen with my Aussie live stream, here's Ruth. Hello. 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 Want to say hi to everyone on camera? Of course you don't. 
So there's always this question of how I'm going to start uh, the process. Uh, and you won't always know, which is why you do these experiments. And as I've shown you in the Aussie scene, in the, not Aussie scene, but Aussie stream, uh, you just kind of have to sometimes try to know. We're not going to try here, of course, um, just going for it. Um, but that's, you just take that with, um, with the, the good and bad of it, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint just a, a thin yellow wash. Okay, and it's not going to cover everything. I'm going to, again, do this a little differently. We're going to work from, uh, I guess, light to dark in a way, because I'm going to start setting up all of these tree branches uh, and really painting the highlights in a way, something I don't often do. Um, again, there's always this risk of the painting uh, looking a little fragmented. Actually, the tree part I can cover. Um, Again, the risk of the painting looking a little fragmented, uh, but because we're starting with such a thin glaze, maybe we'll be able to kind of circumvent that. Uh, we'll see. I just want to try out something a little different. And today's process is going to be really low pressure. Now, I do want to work very patiently in a way, but it, it is going to be low pressure, uh, patiently and slowly, right? Because uh, usually I'll just you know tackle it head on, top to bottom, overarching wash uh, but let's see what we can create here that will be interesting I don't have a, a, a really solid game plan right now uh, so we'll kind of examine the, the situation and see what we can uh, make out of it uh, so a bunch of highlights on tree branches and stuff we may later decide to paint around okay I uh, know this is gonna make our sky wash an interesting part of the process let's just say that um, but yeah and I'm actually thinking of continuing with this yellow over the over everything pretty much like the grass and everything this I mean this was the original plan uh, I think that's what we're gonna do uh, so and I started with my goat brush and then I ended up with a Skoda somehow a um, bit of that a few of these branches here again and I know it's, you don't see much, but we're really just painting the highlights right now. Uh, let's increase the yellowness here just a bit. And, and I don't want the colors to be pure. I'm actually really happy for them not to be pure. Now, as we get to this point, you see this shape of foliage just takes over and all of it is kind of going to benefit from being a little yellow, maybe. So I'm going to do more of that. Now, what I think I'll do next is mix should we let's break away from the palette i just mentioned and try something new so i'm going to add a bit of lemon yellow to my mix and a bit of phthalo blue so let's try and go for a bit of a brighter green and this as someone commented and really helped me this is a phthalo blue red shade i actually need to try out the green shade because uh, that's going to help me out with mixing bright greens. Not that they're that important bright greens, but um, maybe I would want to, you know, sometimes. So, yeah. And I'm going to kind of let this area blend together. And notice how I'm leaving all of those highlights for some of the rocks, right? Um, that's going to be like um, preparation for later when we like to add shadows next to them or you know something like that now let's add a bit of may green to see what what it would look like together because this it's much easier to mix something strong with it and i've been really fond of this green recently so even though i painted the highlights i am going to leave a few paper white highlights as you can see here on the rocks because these really need to shine more than the the tree branches probably at least some of them but you have to be careful not to overdo it. Like just leaving a few is enough. Uh, if you're gonna leave too much, uh, you may end up with not clear enough of a focal point. So that's gonna be our first wash. A very strange one in a way. Um, and let's actually strengthen that close to us. Let's switch to our phthalo mix just to create an additional layer of depth with the values, right? It's all going to dry much lighter and there will be more washes on top of it. 
Uh, but I thought it could be interesting to start this in a bit of a different way and see where it gets us. Uh, really low pressure in terms of result, but also slow and, and careful process. That's what I aim for. Now, let me take a second and actually do some color correction. Because I really don't like the colors right now. They're very warm. So we're going to fix that. And then I'm going to look at your messages. Video settings, advanced. Here we go. White balance. So let's see what we got here. This is yellow, yellow, blue. I think that's more accurate. This was what the... Oh, okay. Oh, it wasn't an auto. Right, okay. I think we'll stay with that. That's much better. Um, now, one more thing. Let's see the saturation, if that makes sense. It's the first time I do this, but, you know, why not? Uh, let's see, the gain is currently manual, but why why should we keep it manual? I'm going to leave it like that with the risk of... It just looks better, you know? But who knows? Okay, we'll leave it on auto. I don't want to take too many risks here. But I think now the color balance is a little more accurate. A little less yellow and red, I guess. Because um, the... Artificial light has a tendency to make everything yellow. Um, so yeah, Javi Javi, Chicago in the house, greetings, thank you so much. Malika Nurlo, uh, Istanbul, I guess, from Istanbul, <laughs> thank you for being here. Jacques uh, Hamelin, hello from Snowy, Maritimes in Eastern Canada. Uh, MB Hyderon can't stay for long, but we'll try it later. Thank you so much anyway for being here, even if it's for a few moments. Uh, James L. Baker, hi Lauren, greetings from London. For us oldies, could you just say what is manga? Yeah, it's just Japanese comics. Manga is the Japanese word, I guess, for comics. Even though they will say comics, I think, but it's the same. It's just that it's a bit of a different approach than Western comics. Um, a bit of a different way of storytelling. Visually, it's a bit different, right? There are some parallels. There, there are a lot of influences from one another. You have a lot of Western comics influenced by Japanese comics and vice versa. Um, I grew up personally on anime like Dragon Ball Z and stuff like that, which is essentially a, a, a product of manga because these TV shows were based on comics, Japanese comics. So I have that. It's been very popular here. And ever since I grew up, I have that kind of a, you know, what the thing you see as a kid, that's what you're uh, getting used to. So I have that kind of thing. Uh, where I'm used to it, I like it, it's what I read mostly um, growing up in the comics scene, I read a lot of books actually, but in the comics scene I read more manga, I guess, uh, so yeah, in a word, that's what it is, um, and I will show it again for uh, people who joined afterwards, Tom says, ah, Ruth is such a diva, that is so true, uh, N.M. Ranch, and hi Leron, Neil from uh, Michiana, or Michiana, I don't know, why wouldn't you slam the super light washes all over the paper and then negative paint the darker values mm. yeah because i want to try a bit of a different approach um i want to try and paint the highlights it's a bit of a psychologically it's different and then paint around them and leave everything that should be dark dark uh, i'll actually i think i'll take a more loose approach in the process so sometimes i get in this zen where i'm able to paint things pretty accurately from observation by squinting my eyes and kind of not thinking logically and I think that's what we'll try today and we'll see how it goes. The next wash is going to be that wash that you're talking about. It's going to set the, the color and value for the sky and it's going to put in all the mid-range shadows in a way. Because I usually do what you said, I wanted to try something a little different, basically. Uh, St. Inky, almost missed it. Hey, thank you for being here. Uh, Jay Anderson, hello from the land of Lars Lern, Sweden. Cool. So many good painters from Sweden. Uh, and thank you for your video with August Sandstrom. Never heard of him before. Yeah, he's so good. His night scenes are amazing. Uh, Joyce, so excited to be live. Love painting with you. Thank you so much. Sawuso says hi from Taiwan. Uh, 1021 here. Cool. Thank you for being here. Uh, artist number 12. <laughs> Hello, big fan. Thank you for being here. Tumefti. Thursday. Hooray. It's the wrong time. Hi from 
Uh, Thessaloniki. Oh, Saloniki. Yeah, we call it Saloniki here. It's funny. Uh, the Saloniki, Greece. Uh, that's a beautiful place. Uh, Dietitian Ori, I'm late, but I'm glad that I caught you live. Thank you for being here. Uh, baby, how can you follow and manage your schedule? I'm studying, but always do homework and on due day. And I want to learn art, but uh, too, but procrastinate. Yeah, it's just you have to follow the schedule. Whatever you put in there is like holy. So if you find yourself doing homework and stuff on the last day, you probably had, you know, more days before to do that. So I would say just monitor your time and see what you spend, what you do, um, how you spend it. Like if you waste time doing things that are not as productive, if you're watching a lot of um, Netflix or whatever, or TV or, or just, you know, um, surf the web. You know, I'm sure if you monitor your time, you may find that... that there is a bit of free time to carve out and then you can do the schoolwork in advance and then have more time to paint. And I would just say you have to schedule it and follow it. Now I see that Josephine is here. Uh, just joined, very interesting, good morning. So I, I actually have a character called Josephine in the manga. Um, and you can see it here. Uh, if you can read that, I don't know, Josephine. So yeah, I was just showing when the live stream got started, the manga page I'm working on. I showed how I make it, turn it from this very rough sketch. It's called a name in Japanese. They actually call it name, name, uh, into this. Uh, a more finalized version, which with uh, a bit more like, I'm thinking, what can I improve? I read it a few times. I, I actually go over it. These are just, you know, paper I staple together. That's how I, I do the preparation. And you can just kind of flip through it. It's very crude paintings. It's just very basic for me to know what the story is going to be like. Uh, and generally, like the scene and how I'm going to show it. But then, when you trans translate it into a bigger, larger format, there are a lot of changes often that you'll, you'll discover that you need to make in order to, uh, to for the flow to be better, for it's to be more interesting and so on. Now, one thing I'm super proud of, two things, is this scene here of the smithy. It's a blacksmith um, workshop, smithy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, with all the tools, I did a lot of research on these things, actually. On what the anvils look like, how they were set up, you know, the different tools of the trade, forging. I did a lot of research on that, actually. Uh, weapons and stuff. I got into this, uh, real deep rabbit holes uh, of wasting time when I should just be working on the story and the, the drawings and everything. And the second thing I'm proud of is this, the face expressions are really improved. Some, it's so funny, sometimes I'll catch like a really good expression here because even though this is very simplified, you can still tell the expressions, right? So sometimes it'll look ugly like this one, but sometimes it'll, be, it'll look really good. I'm gonna show you another example of I think an expression I caught really well, like this page, I really, really like it. This look, this look. Um, let me show you another one. I just don't want to spoil the whole thing, but yeah, I don't have it here. Uh, I have it in the next part, but yeah. Sometimes I just manage to catch the, the face expression I want in, in here. It's really easy to tell, and then I have to translate it to something larger, which is a bit of a challenge. So just to talk a bit about that, like here I feel like I caught it really well, even more than the final version here, which isn't still isn't the final version, but... So this is kind of a surprise and angry look. I should probably play around with the angle of the eyebrow. That's good. I'm going to erase it now so that I remember to do it later. Or I can just fix it real fast. <laughs> so rude of me to do this, but yeah. This is better, see? Uh, so yeah, it's not easy. I'm still learning how to draw these complex kinds of drawings, but uh, it's something I really enjoy and I've been wanting to do for a while now. So I'm happy I'm finally getting to it. Um, but yeah, I don't even remember if I was answering someone. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, okay, we got it. Hey, Eldery from Southern California. Hey, Josephine again. Hey, BL Jam, LK1. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, Den from Russia. Thank you, Pratima. Uh, how can I paint light, light source? Um, so the question is, do you want to, you know, light your scene in a specific way? Uh, I use references for most of these things, honestly. So I just follow the way I see the shapes of light and shadow um, in the reference photo. Uh, Jacqueline says hi from Brazil. Uh, Alice Fed, so excited to be able to get you live. Thank you for being here once again. Uh, and I'm Ranch Hand. Uh, hey, bonus Zen lesson, thanks. Uh, Michiana is the borderland of Western Michigan and Indiana. Oh, okay, okay, I see. That's funny. Uh, 
<laughs> before all second revolution uh michiana i'm gonna remember that that's really cool uh hey farouk uh thank you for being here josephine oh cool yes there is a character uh, with the same name uh banani says hi Liron. finally made it to the live stream hello from belgium sunny cold rain hill <laughs> Uh, yeah, cool. So we can continue with the process. Now let me uh, do this. Let me dry this with the hair dryer. I think it's like 80% dry and then I'll come back and, and uh, we'll continue. I just need it to be fully dry for the next step. Yeah, I think that's good enough. We'll see. Um, so the next wash uh, is going to be a little more challenging. Now, I don't want to really force myself to work a certain way. So I'm really thinking how I can build it up in a way that will work. Because it's not a process I'm used to, this work order. I'm actually considering adding some shadows first, like for this tree and... Uh, maybe stretch it out to more areas. So I think we'll go with that and we'll see how it goes. Again, I'm working a bit of a different process. I'm not as used to, uh, and it's a big fun. Uh, despite being challenging, it's actually very fun to try something different and see how it goes. Let's add a bit of lemon yellow here. Now, I'm going to start actually with the shadows on the trees. I'm gonna try and figure out what color I want to mix for those. So it's kind of a dark bluish, cool color. Um, and we'll we'll see. I'll take it step by step. I know it's a very different process from my usual, uh, but why not? So I think a bit of thalo, a bit of quinacridone, a bit of everything really will do the trick here. A bit more yellow. And this is not going to be enough, of course. What I'm going to do is start painting and, and mix more as I as I will need more, right? Now, I'm painting this tree trunk here. And this is actually a fun way of doing this, of starting small with a relatively small detail so that you can focus a lot and really remove some of the pressure because I'm just going to work on this tree trunk, right? And, um, and get some of those shapes in here that you can already kind of tell and, and recognize. Um, just move this wash along. I feel like it needs a bit more red. So I'm going to add just a bit of the quinacridone rose. And I think that's going to push it in the right direction. And you see I'm making sure to leave these highlights. They're not too big actually. They're very small and almost insignificant, but they are important uh, to tell the story. And if you focus hard enough and you really try and kind of match the shapes you see and the, the way it looks, it will end up looking quite nice and will connect um, in the end, right? But you have to really trust this will happen and kind of do your best to mix the right mixture and and you know things that involve both technical skills and also just the kind of mindset you have while painting i am going to include some of these little branches um, some of these branches here working with the very tip of my skoda brush i think that looks good already so let's see now maybe a bit more blue let's see what we got here a bit more the red and I'm kind of using whatever I have on the palette, which is a great fun as well. It's a big part of what makes me enjoy it. Kind of mix in all different mixing areas and see what I can produce. So let's put in a few of these branches that I said I will include just a few of. Now try not to make them too parallel. So, you know, they should go in different directions, ideally, just to keep it a little interesting. And here we get to this area, which is lit. So I'm going to zoom in in this case and a couple of things. First, don't try and render every small thing you see. The way I usually do this is by 
focusing on the borders of the shape. So for example, here, we have that border between the light and shadow. Make sure you get that texture uh, of the tree trunk by emphasizing the edges of the shape, right? And a bit of the inside of it, but not too much. Uh, like this, we have a bunch of dark shadows within the highlight. Made the trunk a little thicker, but that's fine. Now look at what happens here. Again, this line between the shadow and the highlight. You see this? There's this beautiful texture, and it's mostly prevalent in the transition. It's not like filling things in with a lot of lines and a lot of details. It's the transition that creates the texture. Okay? Um, now let's see, does the color change? I'm gonna add a bit more red and a bit more yellow to kind of maybe add a bit of orange to it, a hint. But again, it's this, the transition. That's where the texture happens, right? That's what creates the texture. And then as we move down, the shadow kind of takes over the entire tree, right? Now like this. And we see some of those uh, patterns on the trunk like that. And that kind of makes up our tree. Now this tree leads to a cast shadow that we're going to use this opportunity to paint as well. Kind of cast to the right. I told you it's going to be an unconventional process. Really trying to break the mold here. What we can do is use this opportunity to connect this tree with the rocks. So the rocks here, there are shadows on them. So let's do that actually. And you see how that works? You don't have to worry about the entire painting all at once. In fact, it can be very discouraging and very tough to do. So if you can divide your work into different sections and focus on them and not worry about the rest. Of course, I could have merged this trunk with the shadow in the background. I could have done a lot of things, but why don't we not worry about that? and instead worry about the thing that's within our control, which is a very set shape that we chose to focus on and do the best we can with that. That's kind of my message here. And don't forget the cast shadows, right? The rocks also cast some shadows. And even if we are gonna need to darken the grass, that's perfectly fine, we will. We will work around it. We're gonna break the fear of working light on dark, okay? That's what we're gonna do today. So if you have this fear of putting in the grass after you put in these shadows, don't worry, we're gonna fix it today, hopefully. Of course, you have to be careful. This paper is probably not the best to do this, but I'm gonna show you it's possible, uh, hopefully. Or we're gonna mess it up and it's all good. So you see, it's, it already starts to take a bit of shape here. And when you work light to dark, um, it's a big benefit of, of this kind of a process, right? So we can actually do the same for this other tree. And hopefully it's interesting to see this because I know this is super like, um, chill to work in, like in small sections like this. But don't worry, after we finish this tree, it's gonna be much more obvious what we need to do with the rest, so we'll actually have a bit of an easier time. Uh, like this background, I am gonna put in one wash probably and stuff like that. Uh, so let me get this from the top. I'm gonna squint my eyes and try and see the overall shape here. Because there are a lot of highlights crossing through and influencing the the different shapes here. And this is what I mean by you really have to sometimes detach from what you see and just consult your intuition in a way. Um, and there's like the, the eyes see, then the brain interprets, and then, then the brain does whatever it wants. Here, I'm kind of trying to not have the brain interpret, if that makes sense. I don't want it to interpret anything. I just want it to let me do my thing, direct line of communication between my eyes and my hand okay something i talk about sometimes but not a lot so uh, if you find that helpful i think you'll find today's stream very useful in a way but that direct line of communication uh, is really important i find and then we have this tree branch coming up from around here going down into whatever is there um, like that, I'll actually darken a bit. I feel like I'm starting to lose uh, the value. It needs to be a little darker. I'm kind of freely, I guess, using the split primary palette, you know, both 
a warm and a cool version of every color. Um, here we get a bit more of shadows crossing around the, the tree trunk. Now, of course, these aren't flat. There's a variation of values within them, right? Um, but I'm going to keep it simple for now, especially because I have this one that's fairly detailed. So this tree trunk, let's get just a bit of texture going here, just to hint at it and near the bottom. And I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to connect it to a cast shadow, like so. But this time I'm going to be a little more, I guess, courageous. And we're going to connect it to a bigger shadow behind this shadow here. Like so. It goes around here. This is a new shape, but you know what? Eh, why not? No, let's wait with that. And then we have a couple of other shadows here at the back that we can connect this to already. A bit of a risky move because then you have to figure out what was I doing. Uh, but it's going to work. I have a good feeling about this, so we'll see. So just a bit of those shadows in here. Let's actually do this side too. While we're here, there is another tree trunk. I drew it actually, so you can see it. Let's connect with that too. Let's get those connections going. So this goes up, a little more simplified, right? And this is why sometimes I love to start from the focal point and move my way out because then you're mentally, you're in a place where you uh, have the most energy when you work on the most important thing, right? Uh, before you get tired of the process and maybe you're getting a little unfocused, so you can start with those things first. Now let's get this shape in as well. Now I'm gonna add a bit of yellow just a bit and a bit of blue because this shadow is literally on the grass. I want it to be a little bit greener. And patiently work on it. Again, you see, I don't have to paint each and every uh, blade of grass at all, not even close. What I need to do is get the overall shape in. So there's this, and you see there's this tree trunk here. And again, if you just let go of what you think is there and kind of just see things in a more abstract light, you will do really well here. And then you see you have a bunch of rocks here with a bunch of highlights in between them. So I'm going to set that up like this. Just a shape. Behind it, there's another group of, of rocks, actually. So I can do this. This entire thing is a shadow, but we don't have to be in a hurry, okay? We can start step by step. Always think about what's the next step I want to take care of, okay? Um, which is actually that. I think we can move on to that. So let me try this. Let me try this, and then I promise I'll take a break and address some of the chat messages. Because we did a lot here. Now, this is really black. This is, gets much, much darker. It's a kind of a bluish green. So let's push it to be dark, but not quite black. And I'm going to use my test paper here for the first time. That actually makes a lot of sense. We got the right color, I think. And we'll just put in this entire mass of trees in one go. Okay, and you really want to pay close attention here, maybe. One go. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to work around highlights. See? I'm going to work around this tree trunk and I'm going to work around this random highlight I recognize in the distance and around those rocks, right? And this is connected and there's another tree here. So let's work around that and get all the way to the grass here, right around here and then get that other side of the tree, right? And I have changed quite a bit here because I simplified, but the general gist of it still, I think, works really well. Look at how it starts to take shape, right? And, and if you have enough patience, it will work out. This isn't as dark, actually. This starts to be a lighter value. And then here, I'm going to keep it like this. There's a bit of it on the other side, but this is a little more complex. Let's get a few highlights in there using the side of the brush, like so get it to be a little darker around here and, and now I have to be a little careful again around that tree trunk we put earlier 
I love to sometimes, you know, vary my approach like this. I don't do this nearly as often as I should be doing it. Um, there's so much benefit in that. I'm gonna add a bit more green and then water. Some parts of this are lighter and I would like to paint them connected. But I don't do this nearly enough when I just allow myself to paint a little differently using a bit of a different process and really letting it kind of dictate, um, you know, what I do. This goes here. This is where, again, that dark shape we put earlier. That's when you have to pay attention, right, and figure out where it is. But once you do, you just put it in and switch to a bit of a darker value for these shadows on the tree. I'm going to show you. And then we'll take a much-deserved break, because this was one heck of a wash. So I'm going to do this. This here is much darker. Get some variety in the branches. Don't have them, you know, all parallel and boring and, and identical, because nature is not like that, right? Nature has very uh, natural variety and, and transitions, and, you know, it's just much more interesting than just a bunch of repetitive shapes. And a bit of that nice kind of a lighter green, maybe. Around the rocks. Put some shadows on the rocks to show that these are rocks. You see this kind of a thing here. Whether they read well or not, you know, that's just... We're going to do our best. And if they don't, they don't. This should be dark. Like that. And this actually connects to this shape, so we're good. There's another rock here behind. But let's stop. Let's stop and kind of reassess. Now, can you see how it starts to make sense? The one thing that, that needs more addressing is the sky and those darker mid-values, right? And that will really make this shine, this shine. If you can detach from what is truly there and kind of see it, Direct line from brain to hand. Basically, that's my point. Um, okay. So we were with Josephine. This could get me into manga. Love her eyes. Thank you. Um, there are going to be some cool character designs. Baby, are you going to color the manga when done? So not really. Uh, it's going to be black and white 90% of it. I will do like, you know, a, co a color cover page. I'll have to think about all of these things. Uh, but we'll see. I'm, I'm still, it's still um, in a very experimental stage in a way. Of course, I'm serious about it uh, and, I, and I want it to happen. I'm just not sure exactly about the format. Now that it, and whether I post it online, because there are a lot of websites where you can, where you can post these or whether I want to um go with the publishing house if i can find a good match for that i may do that like something like dark horse comics that did berserk that would be amazing honestly uh but yeah if i <laughs> currently i'm at the rate of one page a week so 50 pages in a year is not a lot uh but yeah if you know anyone from dark horse comics or any other major publishing house for comics manga let me know hook me up um I wanted to say something about the process, but I forgot. So, actually, I think I think I should probably do the or it's too late. You know what? It's too late. It's okay. This should be darker. I'll, I'll do it later on. It's fine. Um, but yeah, sometimes I like to, you know, start with super light, then go for the darks, then go for jump between the two and kind of find my range. It's a concept I'm going to talk about in my upcoming course, actually. Oh, one more thing I wanted to say. I'll probably take this live stream and, and slice and dice it and post as a new video where I just show you the painting process and where we don't go without all the talking and everything because I know some people just want the painting process. Uh, but yeah, Farouk says hi from Turkey. Thank you, Tom. I can't remember. Have you painted seascapes? Uh, got a lighthouse photo with a nice choppy sea. Can simplify it, obviously, but... The wave rock splash detail and foreground are nice. Would love to see your take. Yeah, send it over. Or you can even send it on the Discord, however you want, and I'll, I'll see it. I'll be happy to give it a try. I do paint occasional seascapes. I have a few videos. I actually have a playlist for every subject. So there's a playlist for seascapes, seascapes, animals, everything. Uh, so, yeah. 
Uh, the sky is quite light, then why haven't you done in the first wash? Yeah, Rita Brata, I explained. By the way, it's been a while since I saw you here, right? So thank you for being here. Uh, I explained I wanted to take a bit of a different approach where I start with painting the highlights. The sky is quite light, but it's actually closer to a light mid value. It's darker than the highlights. So I decided to paint the highlights first, include in it some of the greenery, and then go back with another wash and paint the sky separately. There is something to that different process that we may find beneficial. Um, we'll see about that. Some people are purely, that's how they work. They paint the highlights. They paint the highlights literally instead of skipping them and then filling them in. Um, you know, with oil, you'll see people often tinting the whole thing and then carving out the shadows and carving out the highlights. So um, this is a bit of a different process I'm taking this time. I just wanted to experience it, uh, which is a big reason of why I chose it. Uh, Ellen Graham says hi from Cyprus. Elson says hi from England. Jedi Dick says, hey, have you seen Peacemaker? Uh, is awesome. Peacemaker, I haven't. Uh, I heard of it. But I haven't. I actually want to see Moon Knight. Now, uh, fairly recent trailer, right? I saw it just today. Uh, Moonlight. That's what I want to see. I have never read the comics, um, but but it looks good. And I know the actor. Oh man, he passed away like a day before the trailer was out, which sucks. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at. I don't watch too much Western comic related stuff. Um, I watched. Which one did we watch together? We watched The Boys, which was very entertaining. Um, I actually read, um, what's the one with the zombies, the most, the most well-known one, uh, forgot, a, uh, not Westworld, uh, Western Zombie Comics, I can't believe I forgot, I read that, it's like the most famous Walking Dead, yeah, The Walking Dead, so I read, like, I think, half of it and then I kind of lost interest the first half was really good and then it started becoming a little I don't know I just the storytelling wasn't working as well for me uh, but yeah that's one I really enjoyed uh, Monica NJ highly run almost missed you thank you for being here uh, wrench hand I'm just gonna call you uh, wrench hand not NM uh, the direct line of communication sounds much like Betty Edwards drawing on the right side of the brain yeah in a way it is yes that's that's a great uh, connection you made there it's like flipping the the scene and um, drawing the abstract shapes you see because it's flipped and you it reverse it like goes like this so you don't really recognize what you're drawing so your brain can't can't get in the way that's a great way of putting it yep yes uh, so if you can learn how to do that for just about anything it's very useful uh, with painting especially I do think with drawing there's a lot of value in learning what things look like and why and then based on that draw them both from observation and from knowledge but for painting in particular a lot of it is for me detaching and because a scene is so complex I don't really care why this shadow is this dark and why the background is darker I just want to draw it and paint it as it is so yeah that's a great way of putting it Coco, that Skoda travel brush looks uh, to make a nice fine line. Is there a particular name of in, or any other brush you would recommend? Yes, I would go with, I like the Lebanon brushes. Uh, this is the large goat hair. This has a pretty fine line too, surprising enough because it looks big. It has a great grip. Uh, it's very comfortable. Uh, Skodas are decent. This is the Barocco size 16. Now, if you look really up close, you will see that its tip is a little crooked. Uh, can you see this here? It's not perfect, um, but it's good enough and you can actually work with it. So when it faces down, like right now it faces down, right now it faces left. But when it faces down, you can get some very thin lines very easily. Um, uh, Tracy has also a bunch of other smaller brushes like this one. I really, really like I keep forgetting small brown synthetic is really good. Um, but if you want a mop with a good tip, it's going to be either this the large goat hair or a Skoda. Um, the Baroque ones I find are better than the Perla, by the way. Uh, Barbara, Gem and Haley Ron, better late than never. Nice painting so far. Love that brush. Thank you so much. Uh, for what brand do you use? So the paper is Baohong. The brush is Skoda, as mentioned. Palette is a Magello 18 well airtight palette. And uh, that's pretty much it. Tape is generic. It's called Hamavrish, which means the sparkler in Hebrew, I guess. Um, 
Elsa, the very best brush is practice and experimentation. <laughs> it's free. That's a great take, Elsa. Yeah, for sure. Baby says the big shadows look like a group of people. Funny. I don't see it, but maybe I'll see it later. It's funny. Um, uh, Al Mudin said, Ali Mudin says, bro, it's too good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to draw, please give me a reference photo. Oh yeah, there's one in the description box. Go to the description box and you'll see a link to Imgur. Imgur, I don't know what you call that website. It's there. Kim Huliganga says, once you publish your manga, we'll have to start calling you Liron Sensei. <laughs> Maybe one day, yes. I have a lot to learn, really. Uh, Baby says the one uh, he's making is on... Yeah, okay, it's in the description. Uh, Elsa, let's keep focus on making time and expanding uh, effort to develop our skills rather than buying extra. Yeah, I think it's it's okay. Like it, it's a good mix, a good healthy mix between decent materials and and practicing a lot. Uh, definitely, it's it's definitely a mix of the two. Uh, but yeah, I think a lot of people to put way too much emphasis on Ruth's hair on uh, the materials when it's just the practice, you know. Um, you can do quite a lot of uh, good work with crappy materials, actually. Um, so, yeah. On that note, uh, it's a thank you, Vespa. Yeah, I'll do a, an edited uh, version so you can uh, follow along with similar landscape call for. Uh, hey, Alessandro. Um, hello, my dear. I see you often use that travel brush. It seems very versatile. This is made of natural hair. Uh, I think it's a mix. Um, Barocco. You can check online. Escota Barocco. Um, it's not necessarily even a travel. They have the same, but for not travel, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's a mix. Nice job, by the way. Thank you, uh, Peter. I'm not sure how to read that. We then I don't know what that means, but thank you, I guess. Uh, Grab says completed a Mr. Stan Miller's tutorial after uh, your recommendation. Oh, cool. That's a really useful one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so good. So yeah, let's get to it. Let's paint the rest of it. So I'm going to work with a blue now. I want to get the sky down because that's going to be an easy win for us in a way. So here's how it's going to go down. I'm just going to go over everything up to this line with uh, a color for the sky. Okay. So everything that you see here in this frame, here, top, of course, and all the way down to probably around here, that's all going to get the sky treatment while painting uh, around the highlights in a way I'm going to try. Now, what blue shall we mix? Let's see. I'm going to start with a mix of Thalo and Ultramarine. And let's see what we get here. Um, honestly, it looks a little more washed out and not as intense. So I can either kind of neutralize these two with a bit of red and a bit of yellow. I can even add some opaque paint that may push it closer. Uh, or I can use a bit of manganese blue hue. Actually, I think a manganese would work really well here. So let me get rid of this here. Because it looks so milky, you know. The sky is not that dark here, but it's also not super light. So let's see what we get with the manganese. Uh, the problem with manganese, again, it's a bit hard to produce a strong value with it. And it takes some time to reawaken, right? It needs a little extra help. Um... So let's see what we can do here. Um, how far off is that from the color I'm seeing on the screen? That's pretty far off. And what happens if I add a bit of that white opaque paint? Even though I don't want to go that route necessarily. Let's add a touch of phthalo just to give it some more saturation. Yeah, that's more like it. Actually, that looks good. So we'll do a bit of both. We'll get the bulk of it from the manganese blue hue and a bit of it from the phthalo blue. And we can get started in worst case, if it doesn't look right, we'll darken or lighten or whatever is necessary. So, good. I think that will work. I don't know if it's, it's the most accurate, but I actually feel like it looks good. So I'm going to go with that. Now I'm going to be careful because I do want to paint around some of the highlights I established earlier. And I know a lot of people are scared to paint light over dark. My advice to you would be, don't be. <laughs> it's going to work out. Um, a few of these highlights, I'm just going to paint around. It's funny how a few of these highlights I haven't even painted branches to justify, but that's fine, like shadows. 
And this is really, again, it's an accumulation. The painting is going to be an accumulation of everything you did. So the more you get right, uh, the more accurate or more to your vision it's going to look. But even if you got a lot wrong, it's still not ruined. It's just going to be a little farther off from that ultimate vision, you know, but still definitely not going to be ruined. Let's add a bit of some other colors here to neutralize this a bit. So I'm working my way around the yellow highlights I established in the previous stage, as you can see here. I'm doing my best at least. Um, it's not that easy. I'm actually missing quite a lot of them because I'm trying to work fast. That's fine. We'll see what it looks like once we're done with this wash. It's important for me to keep this fairly light still because um, I don't want to lose the eyes of the painting in a way, you know, many people call that the sky that. Um, I want to make sure that they're still, they feel like sky, you know. Good. I think that looks good. Uh, and we'll continue here down to the grass and the other side as well. So here I did put a bit of, you know, the yellow. As long as I kind of leave a few highlights here and there, I'm good. There we go. So I think that's a nice wash that kind of establishes the sky. Um, yeah, that looks good. Uh, and then once we put in those slightly darker trees around it, close it off with slightly darkening here, the grass, it's gonna look perfect. Now, so let's give it a few more seconds to dry. One thing that I wanted to make sure I avoid here is having to spray more water because that would compromise the evenness of this wash in a way it would add you know the droplets and i don't need the droplets here at all um i just want these to be smooth now of course there are a lot of trees here so don't worry about these you know small gaps we're gonna cover them up just saying um rita brata says i've seen some sceneries in which there are light trees or such subjects on dark background and it's difficult to replicate in watercolor due to its nature any advice uh, so why do you feel like it's difficult to replicate? Because of the negative painting and the complexity that comes with it. Now, I give you here an example of how you can actually start with the shadows, start with the highlights, move on to the shadows, and then do the mid values in a way. Um, I have a few videos on the topic. You may want to check out if you haven't. Um, I have a few videos on trees, some more stylized, some a little more realistic. But yeah, I think uh, a lot of it comes down to the process at the end of the day, uh, knowing what to paint first and, and what to leave for later. And that's not easy. That's not an easy thing to do. Um, just comes with experience. Um, so that's my kind of not as useful advice, I would say. I really have to go through the motions of painting these scenes a few times to learn what works well. Uh, whether you want to cover everything up with an initial wash or you want to start with a small section and build your way outwards. You know, there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of different approaches that may work. Um, Paras Keva says, hello from Greece. Thank you for being here. Thomas, Thomas says, I love your demo here. It is easy to work along. I'm glad of the already uh, approach. Thank you so much, my friend. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, I always try to have it, you know, be followable, follow alongable. <laughs> so I'm happy it works. Uh, Blanca Rodriguez says, good morning. Thank you for being here, Blanca. Uh, to Mefti, uh, I find it hard to paint something I don't feel connected to. My ref needs to have a meaning for me. How do you feel about that? I'm pretty much the same. Now, the meaning for me many times will come from the light and shadow, so not necessarily a specific subject, which means I can work with quite a bit, but I totally get it. If it's something I don't relate with, sometimes, like animals, I don't know why, unless it's Ruth, I just can't get myself to paint them. I just don't find it as interesting. Uh, unless it's a part of a big scene just my it's so weird because I love animals but I just don't like painting them on the other hand I don't care at all about cars in real life but I love painting them so yes I totally relate I I'm the same same way if I have to I can do it but uh, the result would be much much better and I'll have much more fun if it's a, a subject I uh, really relate to. sometimes I'll have so such a low motivation to paint something I don't relate 
too. Um, so yeah. And on the other hand, if it's a painting that has a meaning, like I made a uh, portrait as a gift uh, for a couple of friends that were getting married, and that was super like so in the zone because it's their faces. So yeah. Uh, Alessandro, I think it's normal to look for new art supplies. If I could go back in time, I'll surely buy better brushes, better paper above all. Yeah, definitely. Paper especially. I can't believe how much money I spent on low quality products where I could save my money for better. In the meanwhile, I worked in a bad way. Said that, of course, practice is the most important thing. Yep, agree. Josephine, oh my god, years of flat air, and this is exactly the point where I get confused. Thank you. Oh, cool, cool. I'm happy to this this helped it connect. Yeah, planner is like a whole different beast, actually. Olivia says, hi, Duran. Hi, all. Do you recommend beer for good washes or to, uh, or to be good uh, washed? Yeah, so I think, so painting drunk is interesting. Uh, I got to make some art after drinking alcohol. Uh, I used to drink sometimes, not a lot. I never drank a lot, but when I would work on some of the... Um, older books sometimes if i get tired from writing i just have a drink like a scotch but not a lot and it would help me sometimes but sometimes i'll be just like i don't understand how you know there's this romanticized idea of the drunk author i can't i can't get that that usually it doesn't work for me for painting it's kind of i don't remember distinctly drinking and painting just because i don't drink much but it does happen from time to time <laughs> Uh, sometimes on Thursdays I'll I'll give myself permission to maybe have a glass of wine even even in an, at an early time of the day, and then I may paint and it usually turns out okay. Uh, I am on Hyleron. I've been thinking about muddy color, which some painters uh, be are averse to. I wonder if muddy color does have its benefits. Yeah, of course. So people call use the word muddy to describe a lot of things. To me, it's just when you mix too many colors and then you get a gray or a brown many people will not agree with me on that definition that's perfectly fine because there is no perfect definition that i'm aware of uh, some people talk about a different thing i think the texture of the paint which i'm just not i don't have a good enough of an understanding to address but they, it does have a role in the way i interpret it what is that role if you have a point that's very saturated you want to balance it out with a gray or with a brown with a muted color. So the muddy color has its role in which it helps put more emphasis on the thing you want to pop more or be more saturated. So yeah, in the grand scheme of things, it does have its role. Um, America 12U, good morning. Watching from Newnan, uh, GA, GA, what is it? Is that Georgia? I'm not sure, sorry. Walking that close to Sonoya. Uh, ranch hand, darn, that look took an interesting turn in the sky highlights with no branches now i see where you were going good stuff oh thank you so much yeah and i can always add these later on it's not a problem i'll just add a, a shadow as i said to justify the highlight um <coughs> it's funny elsa grace a good tool is important but you only need one or a couple of each yeah i'm i'm not for hoarding i mean i am i have a lot of everything but i don't think it's a good idea i don't live it but yeah uh, america i cannot drink and paint yeah i get it uh, baby, I always clean my water brush until color disappears and it takes a lot uh, of my time help. I just don't. So if, if you're asking for my advice, I don't. So maybe don't. Uh, not the best advice probably though. Uh, okay, so let's get back to the process and then I'm going to continue. I'm going to check where I was in the chat. So we're going to do... Uh, Monica and Jay, thank you. And baby, oh yeah, we read that. So Alessandro will be continuing with you. And now we have to think. So what are we going to address next? And is it dry enough? Actually, I'm going to dry it for a few months. Oh, you know what? We don't need to dry it. Perfect. So now is the time to darken the grass just a bit. The grass is, it looks good like this, but it needs to be a little darker in some spots. So I'm going to be a little careful here because I don't want to lose some of that natural beauty of the scene. So funny, now I think about why I like painting scenes and not animals. I have no idea. Like, I just don't care about painting animals as much. I don't know why, as a subject, it doesn't interest me. Uh, so let's add a bit of red to mute the green, like so. Well, let's see what we got here. This is actually nice and it will work. 
So I'm gonna lighten it up ever so slightly with a bit more water and we'll get going starting from left to right or maybe let's start right to left. I'm gonna work here. So there are a bit of highlights within the green but for the most part this is just one green shape. I'm actually darkening some areas of the grass to make the highlights pop a little more as they should because the grass is a little darker. Greens are very misleading and remember that whether you want to paint them as they are or exaggerate them, greens can be very misleading. And one of the best things you can do is turn a photo black and white and get a clearer view of what a green is actually like in terms of value. Sometimes you'll find they're much darker than you think. Um, now in this example, they're not super dark and I will keep them fairly light and nice. I think Ruth is having a dream. She's barking. Can you hear her? Listen. She stopped now, of course. So she'll dream of, uh, you know, whatever. Chasing a cat or, I don't know, uh, anything else the dogs dream of. And then she'll go... <laughs> and make these sounds that are so adorable. Uh, oh, man, this is so funny. It's my favorite sound, probably, that she does. Um, so... I'm gonna do this, paint around the highlights once again. And you see how I'm lightening it up here and putting, pushing the, the yellow a little more. Because I want to have this center area a little... I still want it to be quite light, right? But we still need it to be darker than it is to make the highlights fall in the right place in a way. A uh, bit of yellow again here. And as we move down, I'm gonna reintroduce some of that beautiful phthalo blue and a bit of yellow and red just to darken it up may seem a little strong but that's actually gonna work out really nicely I just want that feeling of leading us into the well-lit area or whatever it is right um, now I'm gonna tilt it a bit like this because I don't want these to mix too much um, so let's let it kind of chill chill out like that uh, we can actually spray a bit if we want to encourage it to keep flowing just a bit and I'm fine with texture in the grass but that's good and you can see how wet it is by again putting it in the light so you see it's still quite wet and there is going to be some flow but I don't want too much of it so let's kind of tilt it like this and like that and what you'll find is that we I think successfully darkened it so that it actually makes a lot of sense right now I do want to address that back area that I still haven't gotten to which should be a little lighter than this but not as light as that so somewhere in the middle and let's do this I'm gonna open up the reference photo again here and I'm gonna leave a few highlights for the rocks and details and stuff that that I do see in here right there are actually quite a lot of rocks here. Uh, but the one thing you can do, of course, remember, you can use opaque paint later on to add these in. It's not a big problem if you miss them. It's okay. Good. And maybe a bit of it here between the rocks. And we'll let this dry. And I think it looks really, really good. The color is actually much more similar to the reference photo than that, uh, that it appears here. Now, don't worry about. There are a few more details and stuff in the in the in the grass. We'll get those later on. Like there's this shadow here. There's there's quite a lot going on. I'm gonna add that in just a few seconds. The the next thing is actually to add the trees on top here. Let me dry this with a hair dryer, and then we'll look at some messages and or maybe just look at messages while it dries a bit more, and we'll get the different trees here and it's going to really put it in its place. You'll see. This tree is my favorite section for sure. Uh, but yeah, let's go real fast here. Alessandro, let's be honest, do we prefer to draw paint a beautiful girl or a beautiful man? So yes, the reference makes a difference. Well, I guess it's different strokes for different folks, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because some subjects that are considered beautiful or attractive still <laughs> I find no interest in, you know. So I don't know. Uh, Sue, thanks for showing how to make value differences in watercolor. I can see I need to go darker with some of my values. That's like the, m the most common. If there was um, such a word as commonest, I would say that's the commonest mistake. 
uh, I see people like just fear of getting it dark enough. Now, by the way, after we put in all those shapes in, we may discover that we messed up some areas. Like here, the shape should be a little darker, a little lower. These are all fixes we can do later on, no problem at all. Uh, Alessandro, even if actually I draw more men than women. Yeah, I think, I'm not sure, I think I draw a healthy mix. Harsha Kanala, painting might be okay, the speech after spirits, after, oh, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> if you drink, you win. Uh, John Haywood, good morning, group from Connecticut, thank you for being here, uh, thank you Gamzis for being here, Elsa, I too need to be connected to and interested in subject, I love my animals, I've learned so much about creating structures by hours observing and drawing them, interesting, that's cool. Harsha, he heard you saying I don't like painting animals. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see here. Um, so we're going to dry this real fast. Um, and then I'm going to come back and add those tops of the trees. So give me a few seconds. We're good. So, this next stage is seemingly, I think, a little easier. I think. Because we're really dealing with big abstract shapes. So I'm going to do my best and we'll see how it goes. It's not too dark. It's fairly muted. It's a muted green. So, let's, let's do a big mix here of some phthalo blue. Lemon yellow and a bit of renacridone rose, and you just add more and more until you like the balance. So, to me, I think that gets close to the color I'm seeing for those trees up top. So, now more water to make it a little watery. We'll just get started and see what happens. So, I'm going to treat this as again one big shape. All of these groups of of the tree are going to be one big shape because I know a lot of people have serious issues with this and they try and paint each and every tree branch. My answer to that is don't, you don't need to. Let me show you and hopefully it'll turn out nicely. So this is one, this is another one and then you connect between them. This moves down here. Maybe you want to increase the yellowness of it. Feels like it should be a little more yellow. And sometimes a little brighter, so that's something I'll have to figure out later on if I need to lighten some things up. But as a general rule, I'm treating this as just see just swipes of the brush. And the more minimal you can be with these, the better. I am gonna cover up the highlights that are unnecessary from before. But I'm pretty much gonna stick to the shape of trees that I see, right? Now I added quite a lot of green here, quite a lot of red here to neutralize a lot of this, which I find is important, right? Because that keeps this area the most saturated and the most, you know, prominent in that regard. Now here we're starting to connect to that tree to the side. So I'm just gonna paint that in around that highlight from before that, that I lost, by the way, painted over that, but I remember it was there, this highlight. And we need to mix more, more, more of this. Let's make this bottom section a little more saturated and see how that works. A little more, um, a little more of a clean green. In a way. I'm adding just a touch of red. So this goes here, and this actually connects all the way down. But we need to paint around those highlights from before, if you remember. Like that, you see these lovely looking trees. The, there is a s area with sky here, so we're gonna leave that like skyed out. Um, and we're gonna paint around those highlights from earlier, right? And I lost some of the flow, but that's fine because 
even though it's one shape, it's still fragmented, um, which is okay in this example to lose some of the flow here. Now, what's interesting is what's gonna happen once we get to this tree where it's just darker. Uh, and that's something we need to take into account. Hopefully that looks good. Um, also, there are some dark spots. Let me see if I can get them in now while it's still a little wet at least. That here I kind of lost the wetness, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Like that just a few shadows here and there. But as we get to this tree, what's gonna happen is the shadows are gonna be darker and even bluer, I think. So you'll get kind of a this sort of effect of layering and closer to us than this, right? Uh, now this may not be strong enough, so let me add more. Again, of the blue, yellow, and a bit of red to top it off, to neutralize. And here we're gonna have a bunch of these. Now, you gotta find a balance, right? If you go too strongly here, you may take up too much attention from the painting onto this section. Um, so I'm kind of keeping it loose. One trick is to just come back with some water and soften it a bit, like this, see? And as long as the great kind of the overall shape of the sky works, you're good. Now let's add, I'm going to mix a bit of my phthalo with red because I need to darken some areas here. And you don't go too literal, I think, but if you feel like putting a few twigs or a few, you know, branches here and there, you're perfectly allowed to do so, of course. You're allowed to do whatever you want. It's your painting. Right, so if I see some of these that kind of call for me, I will put a few of them in. And by the way, yes, this right side of the uh, tree trunk is a little darker. We may darken it in just a few seconds. Let me, I'll think about it. I think we can do that. But that's exactly the thing. First set up the main key shapes and then you can start worrying about these smaller details, right? This I told you from before needs some darkening. But I'm gonna make it a little cleaner of a green and then darken like that. And hopefully what we managed to create here, and of course we're not done, but what we managed to create here is a clear enough of an impression while still keeping it loose and kind of looking at the shapes and everything and, and hopefully it communicates that, right? Oh, it makes sense. Let me look at it from, from here. I think it makes sense. And it will make more sense once we put a few final touches. So we're good. Um, we'll darken some of the branches that need darkening and you'll see it. It's all hopefully will fall into place. Um, there is something like graceful about the initial stages of the painting where there is nothing yet, you know. Um, I'm going to do another thin, by the way, wash of uh, May Green over this. Uh, but there is something kind of charming when it was just the trees and the green, you know. But that's just, you know, every stage of painting you add and you remove something. So that's just a part of it. Um, I actually, no, let's give this a few more seconds to dry. Um, let's see. How many hours, days did it take on your manga and the story to be made? I've been working on the story for months. The drawing I work again at about one page a week and I finished uh, five pages. This is going to be page six. So that's where I'm at slow. The planes of a goat head. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And I did do a sheep painting live stream and that's the same concept, you know, different planes of the face. Uh, Alessandro, months ago, following you, your work, I drew a car using a picture I made with my, I took with my phone as reference. And just now I'm painting it. So far it's an acceptable job. In my opinion, not like yours, of course. No, it's cool. I'm, I'm actually curious to see it. Send it over. I'll be curious to take a look. So, I think we can actually start working on the darker branches. So let's see what we got here. So when I look at this, I see, especially for this section, that this needs to be darker, but I don't want it to turn black. Uh, and what I think I'll mix is kind of a dark blue and we'll see how that goes. The reason I can do it now is because this is dry. This has been dry for a long time now. It's from the, that second stage or you know something very early on. And I'm just gonna darken it top to bottom. Now we can give it more of its full attention it deserves. So let's see what we get here. 
And if we need to darken it more, we can always darken it more with another stage. But I think what this will do is help things fall even more in their place. And let's see, let's, we'll examine the before and after and see. But I do think this area, especially the right side of the tree trunk, should be darker. See how it makes it pop forward almost? Good. Now here's the thing. Now I'm going to do some wet and wet. So a bit of my blue, a bit of my red, mix something a little stronger here. Even a bit of um, neutral tint, I think, just to give it that final push to be darker. And we're going to do some wet and wet here, see? That's really going to get it to be as dark as it needs to on that right side. Then we can continue with that. And I think around the bottom is where I'll start tapering off that darkness and kind of just going a little lighter, I think. Because it doesn't need to be super duper dark. Or maybe it does, I'm not sure. Like that. There's actually a lot of the tree's texture showing here. Like this. Now hopefully what this does is just it gives this tree trunk a little more tension. Let's straighten this line out here. And actually let's make this thicker because I kind of messed up the shape in a way. Like this. Let's justify a few of these shadowless branches. Like that. Yeah, we're good. And here we can just move on and do this kind of same thing really with some of the tree trunks that are behind. So let me show you what I mean by that. See, there is another tree trunk here we put in earlier. And maybe a few stray branches that are visible. And then we have another one here going like that. And a few others actually. Now it is, you know, you can decide to show more of these fewer of these, you know, follow whatever you kind of see. You can add more details and it will look beautiful. I don't, <laughs> I believe in overwork to a limited extent. Uh, I think overwork in a way is also stylistic choice. So maybe you're not overworking, you just really like to do detailed work. You know, a bit of a funny way of looking at it, I guess, but uh, I really believe that. Here, same thing, let's strengthen some of these and we can always add some highlights later on you know with opaque paint like if we want to add some highlights we haven't earlier to these branches we can we could have done just that from the beginning without putting any highlights originally uh, now here it's gonna have to get a little darker so let me see what I can do here on the right side especially near some of these branches this is a beautiful beautiful branch here I need a highlight that I kind of lost, for example. And now it's just a matter of really you add, you add, you add very carefully until it feels right. Um, this needs a shadow. The highlight is way too thick. This also needs to be in the shadow, I think. So now we're actually at a stage of the painting where it's just about, you know, making improvements. To me, the main shapes are in, most of the details are in. Um, one thing I think I'll do is, as I mentioned, I'm going to add a layer of just clean May Green to make this brighter. I'll also fix this little shape right around here to go a little lower. But really, in terms of major shapes were done. This this is as close as it'll get, right? Something like that. It's just a matter of adding small details, adding a few highlights maybe if you're interested in that. Um, and we'll be good. So yeah, I'm gonna give this a few more seconds and yes, there are a few details here in the foreground as well, which we'll get uh, in just a few seconds. I'm gonna let this dry, look at what you're writing, do this wash, 
of green and then add these details and I think we'll be done. We'll see how it goes. I do want to add some of that here. Maybe the, the little branches that fell off or something like that. Let me stretch. <laughs> It's been a, an intense process, but very fun one. And I think, by the way, sometimes it's fun to do this. So let me switch over to my uh, face here. And if you just take a look from afar, you see? The shapes, everything is there, really. Everything is there. All it is about now is, you know, making those smaller changes and modifications to make it look better. So yeah, let's read a few more messages and then we'll move close to wrapping it up. I have some more work to get done today, so. And it's pretty late. Uh, but yeah. Let's... Okay, baby. Is the manga gonna be free to read? Because I want to read it. It looks amazing. Thank you so much. I am still considering how I'm gonna publish it. I'm not sure. I want to do it with a publisher, maybe, if it'll give it more exposure. I actually have a lot of local interest here. A lot of people locally on TikTok or leaving me comments they want to read it and they will buy it maybe I'll go the webtoons route and just post it online I have to think about it really I'm not sure yet but whatever it's going to be I'm going to keep you updated I promise um Thanga unable to join as I'm traveling we'll watch the recording no worries and I hear I read your message so you'll hear that too CP says hello how are you Harsha I like the critic the student the critic critique the student videos Virtual Instructor has a blog on it, uh, vlog on it, maybe, blog. So here's the thing. I get some people asking me to do this. Just don't have a lot of time. Like people ask about a Patreon and if there's a tier for reviews. I just don't at the moment. Uh, I know some people want it and my apologies. It just will take some work. Um, mental work. I, I'm very busy, busy right now with projects. Maybe once I finish with the course and the book cars book I'll have more time to do something like that um, we we Joyce <laughs> could you please suggest how you store your um, thank you computer I accidentally touched my headphones and started playing music um, could you please suggest how you store your painting especially single sheet I found it quite annoying storing them yeah they're just in piles and in, in folders that's how I do it I have a folder back there it's just here. There is no magic solution, really. Just to sell as much as you can. That would be the magic solution, in my opinion. Sorry, I don't have a good insight. You need drawers, I guess. Now, there are a lot of these portfolio bags that people use to carry their art with them, so that can work as well. Uh, but that's pretty much it, you know. You just have to put them somewhere. Uh, Olivia says, cheers, everyone. No fun, no life. Like a beer, too. I also paint with it. Yep. So here's the thing. I don't drink beer at all. I don't like beer. I never acquired a taste. For me, it's either wine or scotch or pretty much anything else like margarita or uh, rum and coke, whatever it is, just not beer. Uh, sorry if I disappoint some. Uh, Monica says, looks great. Thank you. Beer bottle could be a reference. Indeed, Harsha. Uh, Ida says, awesome. Uh, Josephine, the point where you're adding leaves is usually when I start to ruin my painting, lose the highlights I created, and mud, mud, mud. The Frustration Free course is helping with that. Oh, cool. I'm really happy to hear and Thank you for, of course, uh, joining that. Uh, again, if you don't try and draw every individual leaf, you just do these shapes, you're much more likely to not ruin uh, everything. So just another suggestion. Uh, by the way, I completely lost the shape of that line. It shouldn't, like, I did a huge hill here where it should be more of a straight, like it should probably go like this. Maybe I'll fix that too. I don't like the way it looks. Let me let me fix it now. Now I'm looking at it and I cannot unsee it. We're getting to the stage where Liron gets cranky and wants to fix mistakes immediately, but that's fine. And talk about himself in third person. So this, I would very much like to get rid of. This little hill. This is okay, the highlight. And then this goes much better just didn't like that awkward hill that I had there like this now it's much better even let's do a dip here and then come back up good it's funny it's a big shape and I kind of messed up the the way it looked but that's fine you can always correct uh, Luis says the Ludos the, the Panama cool I've never been to Panama but it looks beautiful uh, let's see here thank you Sushma 
Uh, your painting looks 3D from the distance. Yeah, I know. When you look at it from afar, it's like, wow, it looks so good. Uh, Lola NP, how are you? Uh, we're so lucky that you share for free without Patreon. Thanks. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's my pleasure. I always want to at least the basic content to be fully free. Patreon doesn't give anything in terms of content. It's just your name at the end of the video. Uh, Wrench Hand, talk about childhood influences. This is strongly reminding me of those wonderful, loose, vibrant, and dreamy watercolors the U.S. parks produced to excite people about our national parks in the 60s. Cool, cool. Yeah, I, I think I know this style, and it's really cool. Uh, I love scotch. What are your favorites at the moment? Uh, asks Mark. I'm really such a normie. I just drink whatever they have. I like the, you know, Johnny Walker stuff. Red label <laughs> and all of that. Blue label, I think it's fancier, so if I feel fancy, whatever there is, I don't really care which one, but but the thing, I, the way I drink it very particularly, I have the scotch and I have the rocks in another glass, the ice, and I add ice and I drink and drink and then I add a bit more and I, that's how I like to do it, I don't know. Uh, freaking Moran says, boo for not being a beer guy, yes, sorry about that, uh, it's bread water, so I don't, <laughs> I don't like it. I uh, hope, hope you'll still accept me as uh, as your watercolor teacher. Uh, Marjorie Johnson finally here, and this uh, I didn't want to miss. Yeah, for sure, just go back and watch it. It's fun. Uh, the entire process will be available, of course. Uh, do you clean your palette when finished? No. <laughs> the Grandi says, I can't do that. Can't manage the quantity of water. It's just, you know, you have to just mix enough in advance. So a lot of it is just the preparation. You have to be prepared for larger washes, if that's what you're referring to. Billy Robertson, thank you for the live stream, sir. Greetings from Edinburgh, Scotland. Thank you so much. Uh, Chimefti, Rembrandt never let people see his paintings up close. Oh, that's funny. That's a good trick. I should start doing that. Uh, so here, I'm going to dry this for a second. We'll do the uh, May green and do some final touches. So when I look at the contrast between the grass and the highlights, still could, again, use some more of it. So, which is why I'm going to do this, this sap green stage. Let me get a bit of paper here and just do the thing I never do. Clean the palette. Because this time I really need just clean. Made green. Okay, it's gonna be a thin wash and this paint no matter how much you take out it's not gonna be too dark that's fine uh, it's it's a pretty light paint which is good for us for our purposes now do I want to cover everything with it I think let's start here and see but this is a very easy wash to be honest with you because I'm just um, going over you know, existing areas, I already know what I want to paint. It's just a matter of doing, and this is great practice. This is how I always say, you know, practice doing even washes, right? That's a big part of it. Now, notice how I'm not painting over the shadows. There's a very particular reason for that. that this paint is a little um, opaque. And I don't want it to go over darker areas because it's going to show. So I'm trying to paint around those. Right now, it may be too dark. I actually think it's okay. We'll see. Now, let's leave this road light. You see there's a road here. And then this goes like that. So we're going to leave this section a little lighter for the most part. And we'll just continue moving this down. And I don't think it's too dark. I think it looks good. Let's give it a spray just for fun. And we'll see. It's a beautiful color. I really like it. Add more water, make it a little watery. Let's paint around these logs here, whatever I, I consider adding later on. So like that. And we'll really uh, start picking up the paste soon and uh, getting this painting done, you know? I think it's time. I think it's high time. I don't want to add more detail, like for example here. Maybe improvements but not more details so you see now the grass is much brighter now some people don't like this paint again because it's a little opaque but i actually think it looks really neat uh, and i'm gonna do the same here 
just a bit, have it even, even out. And maybe I can add just a bit of water here, a bit of a risky move, but I want to lighten it up in some spots. So we're going to add a bit of water to hint that this road continues into here. It's going to be more uh, important once it dries. So you're not going to see a huge effect now, but because there's more water, it's going to make sense later on. Uh, let's blend this manual blending as you can see looks a lot better and i think we'll let it basically dry now right uh, let's add a bit of strong paint just around here the bottom of the tree like that good very very good i'm still learning you know how to use the more opaque kinds of paints more effectively and more correctly, I guess. Um, so it's still something in the making for me. I'm just thinking whether I want to put this shadow in kind of uh, while it's still wet and it's going to blend a bit. Um, I think I will try. Let's try. It's starting to dry enough so that it won't spread out too much. See this shadow here? And that's a good little way of keeping it soft, you know. I'm going to add a bit of neutral tint to it to make it thicker. See? That looks really, really nice. A few more details there. This starts to dry, so I don't want to add too much. But you know, there's this shadow under the logs or around them. And then there's this cast shadow here that I think this is dry. So let's actually... We'll we won't put it here. This, I don't want that here. I think I have a feeling this will ruin it. It's too much in the foreground. Do I even want to put this, you know, bush here? I'm not sure. But I do want to put in a few more of these little grass blade details, you know, here and there. I'm fine with actually putting the individual blades because the paper is still wet enough for them to spread out a little, make sense. Um, let's add a bit of orange here. I'm gonna make this a little orange and let's try get some details here. You know what, let's do this. Some abstract details around this little shrub or whatever that is. I may regret it, I may not. Let's put it in there. I do want these pieces of, of wood to show and to sh for them to show I have to do this so you need to find solutions to problems that's the basic thing uh, sometimes so something you weren't planning on doing may reveal itself to be uh, important to do so we'll let this dry for a few more seconds and then I can just come back with some opaque paint here and bring back those highlights um, so yeah, and I don't even have to wait, I can do it now. Let's just do it now. So my John Brilliant Shinhan PWC, my go-to opaque paint for these exam for these instances, right? And I'm gonna clean the brush, dry it a bit. Oh, Brit, uh, Brit Brett finally made it to a live stream. Thank you for being here. I remembered you were in a live stream recently, right? So it's not like you never make it. So thank you so much. And we're just going to paint that log. Bring back that log. So let's see here. But you just need a lot of paint to do this. So. And super thick paint, right? And this isn't acrylics, after all, it is still watercolor. Um, and then there's just a bunch of details here that I do want to add, of course. There are some highlights within that little shrubbery that I'll put in right now. There are actually a few flowers that we can put in just for fun while we're at it. Kinda like this. Um, a few details 
I think that makes sense. There's this twig here. So we'll, we'll add it and then we can add a bit of shadow. Don't worry, we'll add some shadows around these two to uh, make some of the highlights a little more real. Now, is there anything else I'd like to add while I have this paint here? Do I want to add a few more rocks or a few more highlights here and there? Because I do see a few of them here, you know? Just a few. I don't want to be tempted to put in too much. Here I kind of missed that highlight, so that's important actually. This rock here, there's a reason why this highlight goes, why the shadow goes up, because it's obscured behind a rock. That is something that I want to put in. And of course I'll have to add the shadow to the rock. So look, we're, we're going to work from both ends, right? From the highlight side and then from the shadow side. See? And then bam, we have another rock here. Just a fun little process. But these are all final touches, right? The painting was nearly done the moment we put in the major shapes in, right? So I think that looks really, really nice. Um, and we can start adding the shadows to the bottom section as well. I would like them to be a little warmer, so maybe even add a bit of peril in red just to make it even redder or more orange. A little bit of a shadow under that twig and a few sub twigs coming out of it. But this is where like it's so off to the side I'm allowing myself some freedom in, in you know looseness. We've been pretty slow and careful there so here we can kind of go a little wild. Don't go too much because that also is a risk but like just a bit is fine. And yeah I think I really like the way it turned out you know. Maybe I should add that shadow here but let's leave it out for now. Let me take a few steps back here. See what we got. Just gonna put this in front of me and look from afar. Yeah, that's good. I don't want to add anything. That's done. I mean, you could. I could wake up tomorrow and think to myself, "Oh, I want to improve something," but I think this is done. I think it looks good. I think we can call it done. I think I can sign it. This was this drive. Let me read a few more messages. We'll sign it. Move the tape and uh, get close to wrapping it up. Um, let's see here. Uh, Mark says, all good, I'm <laughs> too poor to drink fancy scotches uh, very often, so I've been trying to learn what they all taste like. Your method of drinking, it sounds interesting, though I'll have to try it. Yeah, I'm good with tequila too, by the way. Uh, hey, watch me go, came in late, Fast forwarded five seconds at a time to catch up. Oh, that's funny. Fascinating watching the painting coming together right before my eyes. Sometimes if a video, um, is it a live stream or also in premieres? Sometimes I'll, I'll just put it on double speed and watch until it catches up to the to the actual live stream. Uh, but yeah, uh, glad I caught the dog talking in its sleep irritation. Yeah, it was actually very realistic. Yeah, yeah it's like, like this, it's so funny. Super helpful video, thank you, thank you so much. CY Haley Ron, question, what do you do in order to be content with your own art or creation? Um, I guess being focused on the process of learning and improving with time. And other than that, you have no control over anything. So it's kind of like, whatever it turns out like, that's, I'm gonna be happy with it, you know? It's a decision you make. Uh, and if you practice enough, you'll start seeing improvement. One hack I can give you is to save your old paintings, of course, and then look at them, like look at things from two to three years ago. You may see a, a growth. Um, I think a lot of it is just kind of taking responsibility over the skill. So putting more time and focus and attention on learning and studying and improving and practicing. Uh, learning from the right people, so learning from someone you can learn from. A lot of it is chemistry, some of it is the skill of the teacher, there's a lot that, that's involved in that. Uh, but I think all of these things is kind of focusing on the process and then letting um, letting what should happen happen in a way, you know. Um, I think that's, that's how it works for me, at least. Uh, now that I'm looking at the tree trunks, I wonder if I should not, I shouldn't probably do it, but I'm like, I want to add a bit of a red tint to here and kind of smoothen, smoothen the transition into light. 
Let's do this. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a risk here. I don't care. Let's do this. I wasn't planning on doing anything else, but now I feel like it's gonna be a good idea. So I'm gonna grab a bit of the red here, but it's quite neutralized from being mixed with a bunch of other stuff. Let's do a test run here. So what I want to do is use this mid value here like that and then kind of blend it into the lighter section see kind of like this it just feels more natural you know that's good that works I'll do that in some of the shadowy areas and in the transition see then just come back and blend it right into the yellow See, I think that looks much better, actually. That's funny. That looks a little more natural to me, you know? The trees have a bit of a redness to them, and that just little yellow highlight was too strong. That looks much better. Does it mean I should do this for the farther ones, too? Possibly. Let's, let's see here. Yep, that looks good. Kind of went a little strong there on the uh, highlights. Yeah, yeah, that looks much better. That looks that really put it in. It's funny how small differences like that near the end can actually be significant. But yeah, I think I'm yeah, now I'm done. I'm done for sure. Let's see. Um, I hope that helps see why. I know it's not like the most genius advice and it's kind of cliche, but that's what works for me to focus on the process of growth rather than individual paintings. Uh, baby, the fact that you don't put all the little details like leaves and grass, but it still looks realistic is amazing. In fact, let me tell you, baby, if you put all those details in, you will move away from realism. The eyes cannot perceive all of these details. So you're actually striving for more realism when you don't put them in. Uh, but yeah. Freaking morons, grass blades in the foreground to frame it won't be too uh, distracting, I think. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I think I want to keep it empty now. I don't want to have a clash of too many details there. Brit Brett finally made it live. Thank you for being here. Decorative says hello. Hey, watch me go. Please say against what highlights produce. Uh, if you're here, against what highlight product you're using. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Again. Uh, so I like to use this specific color it's a John brilliant John J A U N E brilliant like brilliant in English by PWCC Shin, uh, PWCC PWCC is an auction house Shinhan PWC um, Shinhan has three lines of paint but the, the professional one is the premium the PWC that's the only one I recommend using and this paint in particular it's watercolor, and it's opaque, and it's uh, pretty light fest, and it's just great for these. Use it straight out of the tube, and it creates beautiful, and I can actually help these smoothen out. Uh, and it creates beautiful, beautiful, um, opaque, kind of warm uh, highlights. That's the thing I love about it. It's warm, and I love warmth in my work. Now, another solution I use often is this white gel pen. It's a simple... Signo or Sinio, S-I-G-N-O, white gel pen by Uniball. That does the trick. I actually plan on signing with this, so you can see it in action now. If the paper is dry enough. That also works really well. Um, as a tool for adding lights over darks. So I highly recommend that as well. We'll soon remove the tape, don't worry, if you've made it all the way here, and I see quite a lot of people, so thank you so much. Everyone stayed aboard. Um, I'm here for the very end, it looks beautiful, says Chris, thank you so much, Chris. Uh, Tony Brahman, Brahman, looking good, thanks. Uh, Bert Brett, I've learned so much from you, Li uh, I've managed to get my guy friend to begin painting, because for some reason he thought painting was only for females, and no, it or not but you helped me convince her that's so cool yeah definitely for everyone uh, i think i do think in some areas it's more uh women dominated watercolor i'm not sure why i feel like in russia um but i don't know maybe i'm just imagining uh john says beautiful composition Liron, love the result another great live stream thank you so so much john really appreciate it just so everyone knows 
John provided this Baohong paper, so thank you so much. You uh, also provided the Thalo Blue. <laughs> One of the tubes you sent me was Thalo Blue. Um, Manganese Blue Hue. Just, John, you're super, uh, super um, uh, gracious with uh, the, the packages you sent. Thank you so, so much. Uh, John S. Hi, Liron. It's looking great. I was wondering how you were going to simplify the reference photo. It seems so busy to me, but your interpretation makes perfect sense. Yeah. And by the way, for everyone who was wondering kind of how to tackle this scene from the beginning, um, and I didn't even do it in a graceful way. Like, all of these are hard edges. There's barely any smooth transitions, but it works. I would encourage you to go back and watch this stream from the start and kind of skip some parts. Of course, don't watch the whole thing if, if it's boring, but... Um, just to see the initial stages because that's when this was painted in the initial stages of putting the highlights putting the grass all of these this was when this painting was really created for real so i recommend that uh, thank you also so much for uh, letting people know about that um opaque paint uh denise vasquez said your videos are always an inspiration for inspiring artists thank you so so much by the way everyone thank you so much for staying tuned in uh there is going to be a really cool video on Saturday of the statue I did. Um, I think you'll really enjoy it. You can see it on Instagram. I think it's a very uh, successful process, let's say, that I really enjoy doing. By the way, uh, one more thing I can see we can darken real fast. We don't have to, but we can. Why not? Again, I told you, if I look at it tomorrow, I may see, oh, I need to improve this and that. But just to show you real quick, before we remove the tape, the cast shadow is darker than some of the rocks. So darkening it will help the rocks look a little more believable. So here, the shadow is a little darker. So what happens is everything that's the shadow on the ground is dark while the rocks stay light. That actually adds to them a lot. So I just wanted to put a bit of it here. And of course, there is a bit of darker shadows in between some of the rocks. But generally speaking just to make a bit of a better distinction between them so all sorts of small touches like that you can endlessly look and see oh this should be darker this should be darker you know um but yeah uh blue sleeves and muted blues is the best part oh cool thank you so much uh josephine jack daniels on ice cream oh that sounds cool thank you to uh to to mefty uh, looks so good. Maybe it needs some shadow line on the lower right area, I think. Yeah, I'll leave it like that. Maybe tomorrow I'll decide to edit. St. Inky, thanks as always. Liron was a bit busy building up a cupboard while watching you. Oh, that's cool. Uh, but next time I'll participate a little more. Thank you so much. No, I am really, really appreciate you being here. Uh, Ranch Hand says, Homer edit stuff three years later. Knock yourself out. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah, I'll just, if it's still here, if it wasn't sold, many of, like, most of the paintings, you know, because I paint a lot. Um, yeah, I'll definitely add more. Uh, Joyce Johnson says, I've been watching your videos for two years. That's amazing. Thank you so much. I have learned more from you than anyone I've painted along with. I love how you experiment and promote creativity. Thank you so much. Uh, Mikey, or Mickey, purists wouldn't be happy with the white jelly roller, right? Yeah, the gel pen. Eh, who cares, you know, we, as long as we get the result we want. Um, it's it's so old-fashioned to me to just force yourself to, or force other people, worse, to stick to one one particular medium. Like, who cares, you know? Art today is so mixed. It's like people even scan works and then digitally edit them. Everything is mixed anyway, so who cares? Uh, freaking morons. I'm in that phase where I'm not comfortable with empty space and feel like I need to fill them with unnecessary details. Did you ever go through that phase? Yes! I can totally relate and, and I, it's something I forgot that I had, but as soon as I read it, it's, yes, I remember that. And I'm like, oh, this should, there should be something here. And then you put it and it's like, oh, what did I do? I ruined everything. Yeah, I I'm totally can relate to that. It, it goes away. Uh, keep practicing. Uh, Tom Dancer, oh, nearly forgot to like. Thank you so much, Tom. Much appreciated. 100, and, uh, 100 people, 71 likes. What are you doing? Like this video, please. Uh, thank you so much. Thomas, I'm so glad with my uh, paint along. Thank you very, very much for your time. You got it. And send me the, if you produce something, send me. I want to see it. Javi Jav, just love to watch your paintings come together. Masterful work. Great job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tazin, how are you? Uh, thank you so much. Maybe uh, if I can manage my schedule and follow it, I will watch your beginner bits. Yeah, definitely. Now let me know how it goes. I really think the schedule thing will help. 
Hurry, I love your videos. I love drawing with coal and painting with acrylics, but your watercolor tips uh, apply nonetheless. Yeah, definitely. I try to learn from oil painters and from different mediums and apply that to watercolor. It's really fun. Uh, hey, watch me go. I'd like to see the last color you added to the biggest tree. Continued up further. That's just me. The last color I added to the big, so like here, continued to where would you continue it? Uh, I wonder, let me know. Maybe I'll edit later on. Uh, Carol says, what paper do you use? Baohong. Um, this one, you can see it here. Um, this one, this specific one, Academy watercolor paper pad. 300 grams, cold press, uh, that's the one. Acid free, 100% cotton. I hope that helps. Uh, Mikey says, I agree with you. Do whatever gets you there. It's exactly. Eileen Collins, what color is the PWC paint? John Brilliant. I'm going to write it down. And then we're going to wrap up today. John Brilliant. Opaque paint. So once again, I will thank you all for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Let us remove the tape real quick and see the end result. Hopefully we'll like it. If we don't, we can always cut the painting to pieces and use it as test paper. No, I'm kidding. I never do that. Uh, I recommend you keep everything. And I love this. This one turned out really nicely. But generally speaking, even if you hate it, I would suggest you keep it for future motivation. You know. Uh, and here we go. Final result. I hope you like how it turned out. I think it looks really nice, especially this section, one of my favorites. And you could put some more time in and start pushing things that need to be darker, bringing back things that highlights that you lost. Like a lot of this foliage here could be darker in some spots. I just feel like personally, right now I'm too tired and I'll overwork it. What I could do tomorrow is add a bit more darkness like this here and there. Um, maybe bring out even some more highlights here. You see quite a lot of lighter sections. There's a lot you can do, right? This is just kind of a first go or an initial stage. You can treat this still as an initial stage and add more and more. Let me switch over to my face and show it to you fully. Once again, I really hope you enjoyed this one. I want to thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here, allowing me to do what I do. I uh, really, really, uh, it means a lot to me. That's how, that's, and I always say, that's how I pay my bills and that's how, uh, how we feed Ruth, who's sleeping there in the corner. <laughs> that's how we do it. So thank you so much for that, Ruth. Thanks you. Uh, and just a quick note again, Saturday's video, I hope you'll give it a watch. It's, a, I think, a really good one. Uh, and then my uh, watercolor realism course will be out hopefully early February. I'm really close to finishing it, but it takes it takes time. I knew that it's going to take more time than expected. Um, what else is interesting? The manga will keep you updated, of course. But I do want to thank you so, so much. And for now, we'll uh, wrap this one up. We'll see you again real, real soon. I actually don't have a button to stop the live stream. So I guess I'll just... Let's refresh and see. It just disappeared. The button disappeared. Uh, yeah, the YouTube's interface is weird. But yeah, here we go. I got it now. Thank you so much. We'll talk again real, real soon.